it is such a huge uh, topic in a broad area so to uh, cover up to comprehend to zip it in a session of one hours or something so let's try and we will talk about it is more or less like an interactive part so all of you are academicians or uh, postgrad students, research assistants, faculty members out here. So of course, uh, this interaction of the ideas, the discussions about things, it helps a lot, basically. And this is the way the knowledge is being progressed. And it is being transferred, the sharing of the thoughts, sharing of the ideas. It triggers the new uh, possible solutions of the things which are we are witnessing at the moment. OK, to start up with, as the <clears throat> uh, topic is very much clear the two of the parameter two things are here uh, we will try to amalgamate try to get to some relations between them how they can uh, affect each other the artificial intelligence which is being uh, for last two decades this is a kind of common word we are hearing uh, in the scientific community and uh, uh, we are witnessing also around us the environment which we live the things are happening, the thing, the how the lifestyles have changed, how this, it has affected our uh, lives. And of course, healthcare, we are associated with them. Every living person is there. He's concerned the best gift the nature has given is his health altogether. And so this technological <clears throat> uh, intelligence is how can it will be beneficial so we can club them together and they can have a good partnership that we will try to elaborate. So. Definitely, a lot of definitions are here. So I just pick up the slides to get some momentum about this one. So this is a state of the harmony of your body, your mind, your spirit. No matter how much uh, other things we have got, advancement we make, until and unless we have a good health and mind and body, we can't enjoy the environment around us. We, can we can't interact fully with the people around us. We, can we can't deliver our 100% from the body around us, okay? Whether it is a sportsman or a worker or the person who is working in a house, the children all together. So to deliver them the, their best, to deliver them their 100% to, to come up with the productive ideas, to come up with the productive values, to give something to the, contribute to the society, contribute to the scientific community, contribute to the educational community, to their family members. The first thing it is required out here that your health, your body and mind and spirit should have good coordinations and they should be 100% out here, right? And uh, uh, the problem what we have got, okay, that lifestyle have changed over the last time. Uh, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, we have witnessed so much things. You might have also experienced out here. But due to the changing of the lifestyles, a lot of different things, a lot of the different, um, uh, the, uh, you can say the disease uh, have come up out here. Then we are only, uh, you can say, responsible. The physical activity have reduced in our daily lifestyle. The interaction with the machines have increased. You're spending too much time in front of the machine. The sitting posture is also important nowadays. Uh, whether it is the students, for the last eight months, we are seeing this due to this uh, COVID. Now the classes are being held online. So posture, the students are sitting to all together for eight hours, six hours, and then sitting postures. Their workout is if affected. So that's all have um, influence on that together science so we want to identify how this the advancement around us can help us to achieve this help a healthy state of mind body and spirit okay so first and foremost out here though before we start up anything out here definitely we need to have the first parameter which we start up to get a state of the body in which state the body is for that we need a diagnostic now, the, basically, this medical diagnostic is a process of determining the condition in which the person should have some symptoms, it's available, some signs are here, and whether it is a pathological conditions out here. So, the what tools we have for that, we have all throughout this here, the pathologies is there, blood testings, and then um, ultrasound, microscope, MRI, cell structure, biopsy, testing, blood pressure, so many things out here, all throughout their diagnostic tools, you can see out here. So basically, what are they doing? They are confirming 
your existent state in which state you are if you are having a hypertensive patient you're having a blood issue so the first thing the you might have some symptoms you might have the feeling that you're feeling a sleepy state is there you can't concentrate on something and dullness is coming up and eyes are getting heavy out here and also you get a uh, there's a pain on your head and uh, if it is a severe conditions so these are the parameters these are the um, signals which bodies give and so what we do we just it is normal nowadays we put our blood pressure meter on our arms and start up most of the time it is electronic in now and age and we press the button and some figures are there it should be 180 120 120 systolic diastolic and and any deviation from that high or low side is an indication that uh, depending upon the distance it is we need a medical attention for that on the same context there are different parameters like your hemoglobin testing is there your rbc testing is there uh, wbc testing is there plasma testing is there uh, platelet testing is there so all this kind of medical diagnostic which we come across they give you an indication about your current state in which state you are and on the basis of that one the medical doctors also they make a decision that on what medical uh, treatment you should be put on fine so and of course some tests are also conducted whether you have some allergy to some medicines so that you will not be given that one so these are the informations which doctor collect from the patient the more information about any patient available the more better understanding of that can be done by the doctors medical science is not a new one it has been here for thousands of years you might have there every country have their uh, conventional medicine sciences here let's progress about i talk about 50 60 70 100 years the doctors were there they were called some with little bit different names altogether they have their uh, local medicines they were treating the patient they were not having these kind of tools but yes some kind of other senses were here the pulse was checked just by placing the hand on the, uh, the patient hand and the, with the pulsating pulse they were able to diagnose some kind of information and they diagnose accordingly and the patient were treated not effectively but yes it was working all together so medical science was there for about you know, thousands of years people were getting treated but it has evolved as we had with the technological development with the technological advancement what has been uh, taking place all together so it has evolved now all around us we we saw the industrial revolution was there we witnessed that one then globalization was there then it revolutions came up now all these technological changes which were happening all around us they were also affecting the life of and also they were having uh, effect in the medical science as well and the first effect in the medical sciences were having the diagnostic was getting improved the diagnostic of the patient it was getting improved day by day altogether new tools were coming up here the sharing of the data was possible out here the the doctors were getting the patient monitoring 24 7 monitoring was made possible altogether with this uh, uh, the technological advancement so then once this medical diagnostic uh, was concerned up till that part is okay that means we have used the tools and devices to collect the uh parameters to decide the state of the person in which state out here the next uh, stage of that one is that these uh, test report will be presented to the doctor he will go through them probably he can have a consultation team also and then on the basis of that one they will come up to certain conclusion and then the patient will be put on that course of medicine for that together Oh, this is a general consensus. How does the hospital work altogether? Sometime a doctor is there individually, he will take a decision. Sometime in a big hospital, we have a team and the consultant is there and he will consult up here his team and then they come up to the certain conclusion. Now, because of the issue which we are facing and which will come in the later stage, we will try to discuss up here, the shortage of the experts in all of the medical field altogether has given us a chance to think up how can it be possible that we will make this machine to assist the doctors not only for the diagnostic one but also to reach the conclusion one they will assist the probabilitical the state of the patient 
and to predict also in which class the patient can uh, is moving through how effective will the strategy work so that is, is all about and why we need all together the help of this artificial intelligence in the medical field although it is having everywhere you can see the, this uh, ai has uh, touched every aspect of the life the most common which is happening around us nowadays uh, you can see the autonomous vehicles out here basically right from the every part of the countries the uh, e vehicles is there so uh, it is coming up this is a quite a boom altogether they want the drive vehicles to drive by themselves of course uh, research is going on uh, some tests are being conducted with some uh, fruitful uh, positive outcomes but still it is a long way to go altogether so ai is being used in the financial market ai being used in an agriculture sector to boost up this so in the medical also there is a more Im uh, important and dire need for that ai artificial intelligence in that one and why is that one because this is a data which we present is here from medicities 2016 that the diagnostic error of course i mean human being is involved in any part no matter how good or experienced they are they are bound the errors to happen it's because some reason or the other that's a big list to be discussing upon what are the reasons for the errors in diagnostic out here but the problem in the miss the diagnostic errors in the medical science is that this is most severe error which we can accommodate because it is directly related to a life of one living person right you have uh, made a bad investment in the, in the share market you will suffer some monetary loss okay that understandable some other uh, plant they can be some other losses but the error in the diagnostic one in the medical crisis so it will directly affect a one person life who is having a family so in all together the social fabrics get disturbed altogether definitely so we want it to be as accurate as possible okay and but nothing is ideal we do understand out here nothing we can achieve the best perfection goal but in doing so uh, still there will be some chances for them but as a human being, the best thing we have got is to make the, the try and to give our best. So in that case, it's, we find out that there about this is a data for 2016 and the latest data is not available for. So about 20, 74,000 deaths each year for this kind of diagnostic errors. One 18 million diagnostic error each year being conducted. And this is the US data out here. So that is a big one. That is a big thing out here. So we want this to reduce as much as possible so that we can give a better system, a better health care, fine. And that we have our limitation. We have our limitations. We know about that one. So how to start up? What are the problems with that one for the medical diagnosis is so hard. The role of this AI system in a medical diagnosis and uh, how many factors that prevent this thing so basically what happened out there, the patient hold back the information as they perceive that it is unimportant or irrelevant. You might have also experienced from your side what's happening when you we visit our to the doctor and he asks certain questions out here. Sometimes he miss and sometimes the information which we have, we don't feel like it's important to discuss with the doctor. We just completely miss that information or we, we hold back intentionally that information altogether out there. And that's holding of information is uh, costing us the doctor to reach a particular conclusion to uh, for our state second problem which for medical diagnostics here which is presently prevailing and we want to check it with the ai system is the cost of inquiring the information so every patient uh, if uh, let's say we want to have his complete uh, information his um, history and all together so that case we need uh, to give the time we need a manpower a person is there who is there who will interview that one and the whenever the visit the doctor he should uh, the, the pay, uh, give complete time and understand and record all together all this thing so that has to be done and that reliance on the recent c available is due to the number of the disease that are possible and to quickly diagnose that is also a big problem to diagnose quickly so basics on all these factors and again in uh, 
different part of the world we have the scarcity of diagnostic tool to gather the information from the patient for certain disease as we have some mental health patient out here who are not in a perfect mental health to convey the state of mind out here, the state of the body out here. But without getting uh, the complete information, we might not uh, come up to the uh, perfect conclusion. Then chronic fatigue is there and some other kind of diseases is there. The so Lyme disease is there. So that kind of way we want to use artificial intelligence for this medical diagnosis and thus now uh, apart from that one the first and foremost this is uh, artificial intelligence for cardiovascular medicine as cvd we call it cardiovascular disease one of the leading role of death all around the world again because of the change of lifestyle we are witnessing a uh, a uh, great amount of people uh, with early age, as age as, as early as 40 or even less than that one, they are suffering from some kind of the other uh, CVD because of this, the, the, the foods which we are eating, the lifestyle, the changes which have all happened all around us. So a very simple one, this is uh, proposed by the Johnson one, the architecture, how is this uh, artificial intelligence will be able to cover up this cardiovascular disease and identify the patient so if you look up at the role out here so first and foremost is here again we can't do or none of them can do anything without a diagnostic tool of course once a patient is having any kind of cvd so the first and foremost the, the non-invasive method to get to that person is electrocardiogram either will be uh, ambulatory one or with a 12 lead a clinical one so that uh, ecg is done with the patient and we get some signals all together pqrs qrs segment here and long one it is a complete one it can be a minute ecg um, a half an hour 60 uh, a one hour ecg or doctor sometimes feels like they can go for a long the file one day or two day ecg altogether now on the basis of that one and some other tests will be conducted this they are, uh, are supposed to identify the state of the patient non-invasive way and then if uh, they have find out certain things certain uh, arrhythmia conditions are prevailing in that one then accordingly the patient will be it's is if is it a con the condition of a right bundle branch block lbb is there atrial fluter is there pace beat is there or any kind of conditions are here so what will happen it's a long process for a common uh, human being, a long one, to look up the ECG for um, um, about, it is uh, generally the frequency at which the ECG 360 hertz is there, right? So in every second, we will be getting a 360 data point. And then you're going to understand how long will it be for a minute and for hour. So to judge that uh, such a huge amount of data by a common man, no, he's an expert, of course. There are a great number of chances that some important parameter can be missed, right? By, uh, by, by promoting this artificial intelligence, we are holding us back and we don't push it confirmation that they are the alternative to the expert in that field. What we suggest out here that they can be a good assistant to that one, where the final decision will be taken by the expert. But before that one, that the homework, the collection, the analysis, the suggestion, the recommendation can be done by the AI, artificial intelligence, on the basis of the patient history which they have recorded, right? As a human being, if we consider ourselves, so how does a person become a cardiovascular expert? Is there, or, or how does a person become the cardiologist, the person who reads the ECG perfect, or any amount of data? So one thing is that they understand these technical terms or like you are an engineering student, so you are understanding some technical terms in your, during the course of your studies. You are understanding the uh, new terms, the technical terms, their fundamentals, which you are very much familiar for that one, right? And now once you uh, come up from the, your educational environment to the industry one, you will witness the live data, the live process. From here, the experiences will you gain the day-by-day -day experiences will make you enrich and you will confirm it with the knowledge you have uh, shared during your study time. And if there is any addition or is there any confrontation for that one that we have read that thing and it is happening, real life it is happening that way. So day-by-day day our experience grow and so is our knowledge. 
right? And our knowledge is also growing every day. And things be, we become habitual. And the same thing is also happening, like with this ex of this cardio, uh, even watching this ECG, they learn some parameters, they learn how to figure it out. And by the experience of that, we say that's a perfect doctor, he's a good doctor, he's a big name. So a big name has come with experience. He has treated so many patients, he has with, operated so many patients, ECGs, he has seen numerous number of times. So that experience adds up with the discussion, right? And this additional experience with the new knowledge which he has gained, different people, different age group, different uh, locations of the world, they have different parameters. So all these things, they are uh, human intelligence, okay? Now our uh, job and task is, for this is a, we are discussing for cardiovascular only but this is the same principle we will be following in any kind of uh, medical application whether which is epileptic seizure detection is there or any other kind of medical uh, uh, application is there the process will be near or less, more or less same so we want this experienced doctor knowledge which he has gained through 40 50 years of experience the case study which he has conducted, the, the information he has achieved, he has extracted. We want a machine to get as much as possible so that it can be a good assistant. This is our task, right? This AI, that AI diagnostic, so when we, so that when a new patient come, on the basis of the knowledge which the machine has acquired, just like a human beings are acquiring that one, it is in a better position to suggest an alternative or suggest the direction in which uh, this uh, treatment should go up and leaving it up to the doctor to accept it, amend it or reject it completely altogether out here. It can't force itself out there. Now the benefit for this will, what will happen out here, the diagnostic time will reduce, right? You are, as we have said, to visualize 30 minutes of ECG, 24 hours of ECG for a machine like we are having the high processing power with using that utilization of AIs, it will be a matter of few minutes so, and before even less than that one and the whole of the analysis will be done and they are in the best position to identify the patient condition and advice to a doctor. Not only that one, the continuous monitoring can be done, diagnostic here, they are the, the, uh, uh, we are having ambulatory ECG, patient is there at the home and doing regular activity and ECG, other parameters are recorded. They are transferred to the doctor who is sitting about thousand miles from him and he is witnessing the parameters. If everything is okay, any change in the parameter, he will just communicate with the patient to uh, advise him uh, to, for that, to change it, his posture, to change his lifestyle, take the medicines all together. So there are different uh, uh, application of them, numerous one. And then uh, this again, a roadmap for this clinical data generation for the natural language processing. Again, uh, this machine learning for we are using it, electronic data is there. So or artificial intelligence is an umbrella terms which will uh, having all together many different fields are there, which we'll talk about later in this session. So the clinical decision making is important in here. Now the clinical decision making which we want the artificial intelligence to take place, it can't do it by itself until it has been trained on that thing, something. And it's uh, ex uh, generally a common phenomena which we witness is here. Here the engine, the students and the faculty members of engineering institute, they are engineers because they have selected themselves to be enrolled in an engineering program. And specifically, once you are an electrical engineer or a mechanical one or a computer one, so the terms familiar to the computer is makes sense to you as compared to the mechanical one. Okay, so he will be dealing with the turbines, he will be dealing with the with the piston and walls and all the mechanics law, which the computer engineers say because they are not aware of that thing out here. They are not trained properly. Okay, had they been done in the mechanical one, they will be understanding those terms. So same thing is here, the clinical decision making for the machines out here, if you want that one. So we have to train it accordingly. And but training again with the, uh, the, the patient data is there, the machine learning concept is here, uh, and uh, clinical notes is there, uh, parent diagnostic tool information is here, all together will be used here for the machines to come up to the diagnostic achievement. 
and again it is a very broad topic as you have said about here role of artificial intelligence in health care health is so basically what will happen out here the knowledge base of the patient will be generated and it will be shared up here nowadays what we are having we are having expert of every field we have cardiovascular expert respiratory digestive immune muscular nervous right and so what will be happening this patient data will be shared with the expert in that field and any kind of issue which is having pertaining to that particular uh, system that doctor will be contacted up and this uh, data will be generated for him he will be looking up at here the treatment will pass on the parameters will change and again it will be saved in the knowledge base altogether so that a patient complete form is generated for the medical uh, diagnostic we generally we call as electronic patient record was there also that name is also common electronically patient data is also recorded up here and so uh, this is a electronic uh, thing but i thought it is better to have a one or two slides for that also micro electromechanical system mems is a very common thing electronic engineers who are sitting electrical they have a good idea about it what mems is all about and they are the one which has done the revolutions there in the medical one right as you see about here and thus uh, as a human being altogether we have a mind to think and decide and to take a decision but uh, is it working as as a separate entity is it working alone the answer will be no so this is working in the coordination with the sense organ so we have the eyes to perceive to look upon nose to smell ears to listen to taste to have the hands to touch and feeling the sense all this information is collected and pass on to the mind and from there they are taking the decision it is a hot surface how to drive how to balance how to stop on the roads altogether so basically i am using the information from the sense organ coordinating with the mind up here and then the decision is taking right so that's why i thought it is uh, important to introduce here so once we talk about artificial intelligence in terms of machine so what sense organ machine will have how does it sense information how does it hear and what will make it out here in that uh, field this micro electromechanical system has done a wonderful they have opened a new era altogether and in invasive instrument catheters to doing the angioplasty of the patient all together and that this special thin like uh, structure is there and that it is injected up here in in the nerves of the in the arteries which are blocked going up here it get opened up and some other communication uh, can also be maintained right through the body then mems can also be used for monitoring other body functions they are being used to have a work as an implant which will be there permanently Uh, implanted in the body for the data collection and other parameters and value analysis so basically generally their development for better and personalized medicine all together individual medicines here this is are uh, the have the wonderful again it is uh, individually it will not work so uh, in 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 coordination with that one medical mems the philips have done a lot of devices are there for the philips one in micro electromechanical system and and these are the one which are sensing the information and which it will be used by the artificial intelligence so basically yes they are <coughs> to ic integrated circuits which have a mechanical part also uh, so it is a chip micro so details are very high about here uh, yes so what we were discussing about here the simple applications for that one which is called as body gateway as we have said again ai when we talk about it is not an individual thing it is a coordinations of lot of um, instruments and body itself and a lot of devices they work in and together to uh, achieve the health care state so basically this body gateway if you look up here this is a wearable device and now what will happen again this wearable device will have to measure some physiological parameters in this case what we is here uh, this will be measuring your electrocardiogram the heart rate the breathing rate and this rates or the signal they have the information about the state of your body right the each ecg state it it, it gives the information about your state of your body your palpation rates your uh, the pqrs segment that a lot of information is hidden in that ecg so 
it can also detect the person is moving or is there any abnormal movement that person is have fallen on the floor for old person then this data which is being recorded up here and it will set up an alarm which can be uh, sent up by the bluetooth is there or any other internet gateway is there to the hospital control room out here so the body gateway and then based on the data which is being received by the server they will compare it the program will run it the algorithm will run all together and they can come up to the conclusion that what kind of patient attention is needed is it a severe case we should attend it immediately the emergency to be done or we can contact the patient to advise him for the further course of medicine and what or he can we can call the patient to the clinic as a lot of opportunity options are there for that one so this is one example how this micro mems then electronics and this uh, sensors along with the ai will be used up here one part is there then another very interesting things is happening up here in the medical field in the healthcare system with using the artificial intelligence is the brain computer interface or we generally call it as a bci so uh, it's not a new idea computers to communicate it is being done for a long time but direct interface between the human mind and the technology without any touch without any sense just by thinking just by thinking power activating the neuron and that message should be converted into the machine now that is a really interesting thing out here so we have a uh, brain computer institute is here a lot of area people in the uh, this field are working all together and um, uh, starts have results have come, started coming out all together controlling the, the the mouse the cursor of the mouse starting the particular application and the computer and some uh, easy task holding an object from just by thinking of these kind of tasks we have already achieved just by with the brain computer interface and that is a, a good breakthrough if you understand uh, take a closer look at that one without any perceiving without any command or by moving our limbs or anything just by thinking in our mind we are able to perform some kind of physical activities also all together the machines will be able to do that and we give the instruction so what will happen how is it going to affect in the healthcare one and for the special kind of patient which have a neurological disease or disorder nervous system they can uh, it take away the patient ability to speak or to move interact meaningfully with the people environment so this kind of brain computer interface backed uh, by the artificial intelligence it can restore this fundamental experience like uh, uh, uh Austin, it's uh, working on the wheelchair person is here either he moves with hand but if it, that is not possible so that electronic uh, motorized wheelchair just by thinking and giving the command from the mind itself it is able to move in a particular direction out here and in that case it is able to have the mobility of the patient right so these kind of brain and bc it is a huge failure in itself and a lot of scope is there for that one to work in the brain computer interface then the next generation radiology tools and we complete up here this is not a new one mri machines are from some time x-rays are old things scanners are here so basically but still what, what we were discussing earlier uh, this diagnostic process they still rely on the physical tissue samples to biopsy which will carry the risk of the potential infection right so you have you have to identify the tumor what class of tumor is it is it a banning tumor or a non banning tumor what uh, it is a spreading one so we take a biopsy we take a tissue out from the one then the culture is there classification and we come to the conclusion so it is an invasive process what we want is that the use of artificial intelligence will able the next generation tools to come up to the conclusion by replacing the need of real tissue samples all right so what we want up here they we can call it as a virtual biopsy just by having a high resolution images all together it is able to come up to the conclusion come up with a uh, confirm answer as close as possible what we can do with the real biopsy out here non invasive one we are having here a non invasive one so if that is the case is up here and definitely it is a more convenient format also and angiography is here angiography if you have a little idea about here to understand the blockage on the arteries invasive it is invasive one uh, syringes and needle is inserted either by the in the arms or in the lower abdomen side 
up here and then it is going past over and the camera is connected all together you will see what is the blockage condition of the arteries now we are having and non-invasive angiography altogether is available for a patient which is not a severe case and a young at a good age so doctors now are recommending and we are getting a promising result also okay now it is not common uh, for all of the patient but yes for some of them it is a good uh, uh, technology an idea to come up for that one in this case is a non-invasive uh, method is there patient are a bit more relaxed rather than having an invasive method so and another uh, very great advantage of this uh, artificial intelligence uh, for healthcare is that this technology advancement will help to mitigate to lower the impact for uh, those regions or the develop, uh, developing countries where there is a scarcity of the doctor, experts are few, the labs are few. So come up here. Now everybody, every human being is and should have a good amount of health care, good health care, better diagnostic facilities out here. But the problem we can't deny is the shortage of staff is there. Resources are limited. All through the things we have to consider, all, right? So now the special low resources area example the artificial intelligence imagination tool they can uh, screen the x-ray for the sign of tb and which have a level of accuracy comparable to the human being and so the x-ray is being done here which a technical man was here but we don't have a radiologist to read it properly so the, this machine has been transferred the machine have the database it is trained and it is understanding the already that this patient is having a pos true positive case for the TB and they can advise the doctor on the basis of that one so that doctor can give him the immediate attention fine so in the low resources area this artificial intelligence will again help uh, to cover up the shortage of the trained stuff which is uh, generally prevailing in most of the part of the current world then uh, pathology results as we have said the all the decision in healthcare are based on the pathology somewhere between <clears throat> 70 to 75 percent of the data from patient collected are from the pathology so the accurate answer we get from this the right diagnostic we will be there in a better position so then ai is will be in a better opportunity to make a decision on the basis of the data which they have got from the pathology up here the the high quality data the more close data the more accurate data the more uh, better ai artificial intelligence can suggest the patient condition so as we have discussed about here this cardiovascular disease they have uh, when generally uh, we will be talking two things up here that's what we are doing at our university and the ai system that's uh, cvd if generally we call it here among 80 percent of the death in low and middle income countries amongst equally for men and women are due to cardiovascular disease and about the this is the uh, who data which we are sharing that around about they have uh, this 2030 23.3 million people will be affected by that so what is the reason about for that that most of the individuals they are remain unaware for the symptoms of heart attack or just that this they dismiss them without it, giving any concentration without giving any thought about that thing out let's take it lightly a casual approach they adopt here so what we design what we plan for that one is that this we have a mechanism for data acquisition then the signal processing to be done automatically and the pattern recognition pattern recognition when we talk about again there are several important features important hidden information in an ecg which uh, uh, expert once they look at the ecg they find out okay this is a condition we have several arrhythmia or abnormal ecg beats are here which can be identified by the the person who's having a good expert of all together here what we want we want that expert knowledge work to be done by the machine once this uh, ecg is acquired signal processing is done automatically and then machine analyzing the data recommend 
that this patient is having a high risk patient, a low risk patient, or the minimum risk, risk patient, and he should visit the doctor or some kind of mechanism which doctor contact him as soon as possible. So this is one of the applications, and this is the work already been happening all around here, and there is a lot of scope in this one. So it has to be very effective. Uh, techniques are here, neural networks are being used in that one, support vector machines are being used, K means clustering are used in this thing, and a lot of machine learning techniques are here. Now we have deep learning tools are also being used up here. But definitely, again, every technology, every technique has the pro and cons for that one. So we need that uh, result to be uh, as accurate as possible, at the same time as fast as possible. Right, two things are here because the patient life matters, and we have sometimes we have very few minutes to take a decision altogether. So, a system which is very accurate but it's taking a long time to come up to the decision, it will not be supported by the medical one. They want a decision to be quick enough, fine. So, and something to be as accurate also. So, two things we have to keep in consideration when we select a system it should be fast and it should be accurate, both the things, and we have to maintain a balance between that two. So yes, uh, this is a little biological one. Uh, so the electrical system of the heart, we have those sinoatrial nodes, then uh, AV node, which is located how the electrical signal is being originated. This is a real pacemaker, the natural pacemaker of the heart, which is conducting. And because of the passage of the signal, the contraction or relaxation of the heart muscles take place, upper chamber and the lower chamber altogether. And this is a coordinated effort. Involuntary muscles are here, right from the day child is born, Till this last day, this machine continuously works, pumping the blood 24-7. Most important machine, anything has happened, any problem associated with the heart have a direct influence on the health of the patient. And it affects the other part also, the high blood pressure patient, hypertensive patient. The first thing which will get affected will be the, the kidney function will be affected altogether. The kidney functions here and there are chances and there is a data that high, high blood pressure, hypertensive patient can have a medical history to be getting the diabetic also at the later stages altogether. So system uh, in one are related, interrelated to each other once we. So definitely it is important to have this check and uh, cure up as soon as, as earlier as possible. And for that one, this independent component analysis method is being uh, used. Although, as we have discussed, there are so many things, uh, methods and technology being used up here. When we were there in Salford University in Manchester, we have. So basically in this one, this is an advanced uh, format of, you might have heard about this principal component analysis in which the principal components which are perpendicular to the each other are being taken out for feature reduction. In this independent component analysis, this is a method to finding the underlying factor, the independent factor, the statistically independent and non-Gaussian one. And so ECG, they are being used. Specifically, they, they are ideally suitable for electroencephalogram EEG out here in which we are having around about 80 to 120 or 200 electrodes placed on our head and they are recording the brain signal and some noise will also be there definitely you can't escape from that some electrode will be catching up the noise so we have to identify that thing and cancel it out here so with this is independent component analysis is most suitable in identifying either you design the filter for that one that is one option out here but for filtering uh, des design you should be having a clear uh, information about the noise response how what frequency is here how much is that one and then you will be able to design this ICA without having an inform requiring the information about the noise state it is able to identify the signals because there will be completely in the statistically independent from the brain signal to the noise one and this is what we want to highlight all about and then we will be able to separate this cocktail party problem will uh, help you to understand what I see how does it work out here suppose there are two microphone in a room and two persons are simultaneously speaking over here so the recording in this uh, my each of the microphone will be partially from the speaker one and speaker two 
out and this partially when i say it will depend upon the proximity of the speaker one from the microphone one and the proximity of the speaker two also from microphone two and this uh, number can is not limited to two it can be more than two speakers and more than uh, two microphones are available so once we analyze the signal once we analyze the recording in the microphone one it will be a mixture of two why or more than voice depending upon the speaker out here and same thing will be for x2 here so our goal is the electrode which is recording the signal it is also having the influence from the other part of the part we want the signal to be separated without having any information about how the mixing has been done this is a blind matrix we don't know about it here so what statistical property we can use and highlight to use it and explore it to separate the two signals. I hope you understand these things. We want to separate the microphone X1 is having the voice of speaker S1 and S2. Other can also be there. We want to separate these two to the original state without any, any information about how the mixing has been done. So basically what will happen out here? We use the property of independent component analysis. That's these two speaking are independent of each other and highlighting that one, extracting that one. The mixing matrix, we are not sure about it or how the mixing has been done, but signal measured is here. So we want to design an unmixing matrix on basis of independent compound analysis to get up the signal as much as close as possible to the original signal. In that case, we are highlighting this independent component, which use the non-Gaussianity and statistical independence between two signals. That's what it counts up. So basically, this is what ICA works, how this is, how does it uh, perform the job. So this independent component, it will work by maximizing the statistical independence. Then we will change up, or you can see, we will rotate the signals in a space so that the statistical independence is maximum at that time altogether now now once that is achieved the maximum independence will be an indication that these two signals are completely separated there are pre-processing stage of course for that one so what we will be doing in this algorithm we will be uh, minimizing the mutual information there should be absolute minimum information and we will be maximizing the non-gaussianity amongst the two or more signals altogether so this was a noise removal tool we have uh, tested up here. Two so signals were missed altogether. Signal one and signal two, which you see in the top uh, uh, row. And the ratio of the mixing we were not available to us, right? Using the independent compound analysis and a lot of algorithms are here. We have Infomax algorithm here, JED algorithm is here, then uh, FAST algorithm is here. Every algorithm have their own uh, pros and application area. So fast algorithm, we have used it for this ICA. And you can see in the lower stages that we are able to perfectly nearly separate. This is an ECG signal and this was noise altogether without having any information how the signal was mixed at the earlier stages out here. Okay, so this is one thing. Uh, the electrodes are only two in use case, but in when you talk about electroencephalogram, EEG altogether, they, the electrode, they are as high as 180 or 120 or 200. So for a normal uh, human observation in individual work to separate the signals, it will not be possible. In that case, is this ICA is really a boon, a good tool to be used up to find out and purify the signal. As we have said, the pathology, the test, the diagnostic should be as good as possible. Then only we can come up with a, a good result for the patient uh, identification. And uh, flowchart, uh, more or less, they have any signals we have. ECG is here, so pre-processing will be the normalization. Then whitening will be done. Then we will be estimating it using the ICA then noisy component basing on the kurtosis they have the fourth moment correlation estimation and then we are able to reconstruct the ecg this is what we were talking about of this graph and uh, the proposed uh, method was for the motion artifact removal we have used uh, two electrodes and one electrode was placed uh, as a normal one and the second electrode we identified at which there is a minimum 
ECG and the noises was only collecting here. So it uh, become as a source of only noise as a benchmark. So we can use it and compare with the other noise. And now this ICA based features, we can, it is open. We can, for classification, we can add up other features also. ECG can have the features for RR interval. You see in the peak or the, if you look here, PQRS, so this is the peak of the ECG beat, or uh, difference, the first beat, second beat, third beat, any difference between the consecutive beats is called as RR interval. And this is the most important segment of any ECG is QRS segment. So in this QRS segment, uh, and this is the, the height of this one have information, the, the width of this QRS segment have the information. So a lot of information is being hidden up here. Okay. So these are one of the features which we are able to uh, identify and use it. Some other features are also available. You can use it as you find. The more features you have, the better diagnostic uh, exam uh, result you will be able to get up here. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's rushing time. Let's see. We'll, this is a th theoretical background for feature extractions here. So let's skip it up here. Now come up to the another application for this uh, uh, artificial intelligence. This is a signal from the brain, basically the electroencephalogram EEG signals. So this is a common problem of seizure, which is a malfunctioning a manifestation, abnormal excitation of the neuron in the cortical neuron and epilepsy this is a recurrent seizures coming again two or more which are not provoked by the system so seizure detection epileptic patients are here and definitely sometimes they need an immediate medical attention so and it cost also they are under special medication so the ai if by any chance by working on the data of the patient history for all throughout a long time. And from the experience gain, if we are able to predict that at this time, the patient can get a seizure, then we can be better prepared for that one. The medicine can be released at that point of time. So generally different type of seizures are here, partial seizures, generalized seizure. So our idea for using this AI is if we can predict the onset of the seizure, that this time the seizure can occur. So the patient can be prepared, the doctor can be prepared, the medicines all together, we can save a lot of time all together. So those person who are having this problem, they have a difficult to live a normal life. It is a serious disease. They can be driving who are having and they get a, a seizure. So at that moment, it is a risk danger to their life also, to the person who are sitting with them, to the person who are walking on the roads also. Other conditions are also associated. There can be a consequence of accident, fall, drowning, suicide, any kind of things out here. We want the AI signals systems to use the signals, to use the information to predict the seizure as accurate as possible so that the person can be better prepared for that one. And they are random. Sometimes they occur at a, in set time, sometime for particular activity he is doing, sometime he is doing some extra st stress to his brain, or sometime um, uh, randomly at any given time they can occur all together. So methodology again for this one, we have feature extraction as we have seen in this uh, e ECG part, they have time domain feature, then animal multivariate signal is there. We can have wavelet based features, find time and frequency based feature. So a lot of information is hidden in this uh, uh, signal and it's a huge one. So uh, that we can talk about. It is a huge way, as we have said, time was uh, so much is all happening all around us for the AI. So how to start up, we will, uh, let's see, we will, we will talk about some case study as well what is happening around here. AI is a broad branch. It is umbrella terms, 1945, 50, it started up here, machine learning, big data, all together, they are part of this AI, right? So we'll talk about this expert system basically out here. And how does, this is a part of the AI. So how can expert system, they can help us to be a supportive and decision-making system. What decision-making means? 
I am able to use this expert system. The computer can learn just like the expert, a normal human being who learned and it can guide me. It can uh, advise me. It can recommend the expert to the field. It, we have already existing uh, expert system. This is not a new thing. Stanford, they come up with the uh, as early as in 1970s they were coming up with expert system for medical purpose for uh, exploration purpose for financial market so there are a lot of expert system they are existing and they are being used here and why we are selecting here these are some uh, uh, limited one uh, but a list is very vast emotions efficiency memory limitations they are nothing as such security considering all the fact out here how does it work so basically if we have to dis, uh, define the human intelligence and we want the same thing to be machine so basically the ability to learn and understand to solve problem and to make decision right this is what we call intelligent you are here you are particular you are a, a technical uh, community member you have ability to learn things what you is being taught to you you understand the problem you understand in your own context and you try to solve some problem based on your understanding and for that one you have to make a decision so this is a complete uh, you can say a one of the definition for the intelligence now we want this kind of same ability to be performed by the machine right they should be able to learn from the experience they should be understand they should be able to solve the problem and make a decision altogether this is what ai so the can machine think is an important question out here so the answers cannot be easy to just say yes or no it is a typical quite a complicated one so a lot of works has been here and we will just skip up so this is an intimation game those who are computer engineering student out here they know about alan turing who come up with the computer machinery and intelligence about 50 years ago he proposed the benchmark how to understand the intelligence with so he put up a, a imitation game that if some machine uh, uh, we claim that it is to be a true artificial intelligence it should be able to pass this benchmark for turing imitation games out here so you can refer it out here but up till now we don't have any pure ai system available who can pass this uh, benchmark for that one so how are they related we come up to the real uh, conclusion to start up yes we have talked about this earlier why medical diagnostic is hard and now yes so this we want to highlight as we have said the expert a real expert he has a knowledge basically he has a theoretical knowledge a practical understanding and all throughout the time he has acquired his knowledge out here now anyone can be an expert if he have the knowledge for both facts and rules and for that area he will be a knowledgeable person we understand that one so uh, in this expert system uh, which is a part of ai how are we going to tell the machine to perform the particular task the easiest way is that we have some rules and definitely we have rules a simple example there in front of you a child as early as when uh, he she goes to school they know how to cross the light and we want them to know as soon as possible that once it is red you should stop the vehicle it is green we should make a go and in between a yellow amber is here so be ready for that one so anybody which have this information they can easily move on the road following the traffic signal right and we will say that this person is knowledge knowledgeable he know how to travel on the road he know how to uh, obey the road traffic rules and somebody who break the rules so he will put him his life also in danger and the life of the other people who are walking also also in the danger one so if and we want the same thing to uh, the machine to work let's see we have autonomous robot so it should move on the uh, road the camera is there sensing is there so they sense the red light and it should stop green it should make a go out here so one form of the knowledge which can be transferred from the human to the machine is rules right so the person who are making that robot or the machine like autonomous car we are witnessing nowadays so they have this information that we have to stop we have to maintain a distance we have to follow the speed limit and the, we have to be maintain a side distance front back also distance between side vehicles also when we take a turn we should indicators everything is being informed in the form of rules the machine has been taught that they has to follow that particular rules so this is the one form of the knowledge we can uh, inculcate into the machine in the form of 
or rules. That's why it's called rule-based system or expert system. So the, again, I uh, will try to quickly cover up this there and different ways. So like it was here, if then is the best uh, uh, way to represent the knowledge. If the, some condition are met, then this should be the outcome here. So relations, it can the rules can show us the relations, the recommendations, the directions, the strategy, the heuristic approach. There are a lot of options here. So in the rule-based expert system, who are the main players? Now, they are five team members. Expert system we are designing up here. So first and foremost, the, it is a domain expert, right? The person who has the knowledge of the particular domain. He is the one who has acquired this knowledge through his experiences altogether. And now we want our this expert system to behave as the way, the way in which the domain expert. For this one, we will be having a knowledge engineer who is a central part of the central player of the team. So he knows how to extract the knowledge from the domain expert in the form of rules. Because the machine is a binary machine, uh, it understands zeros and one. Everything has to be coded. So whatever the information, if I say like uh, uh, it's it's not the tea is uh, hot, but I can still drink it. So this doesn't make a clear sense. I'm talking about something vague. You are saying hot at the same time, but you can drink it also. The transformer is overloaded, but still you can work for a while. So machine don't understand these kind of it has to be in a binary state, either zero or one. Either you go or you are right or you are wrong. So this knowledge engineer is have uh, this responsibility to extract the knowledge from the domain expert in the form of rules. So he's the one person who will be uh, formatting, who will be making the rules and these rules, or you can say the algorithms in the simple sense. He will be the one who will be making, you know, his task will be to extract as much information as possible as much or through the he, the person the domain expert has an experience of 45 years of 30 years and of different fields on dom knowledge engineers he is not uh, that expert but he knows how to extract the information that one the more information from that one then the programmer who is uh, having that uh, the coding expertise he will be able to the he knows the language with the computer understand so he will be coding that thing the coding will be done by the programmers and of course, the project manager who is supervising the resource management is there. The timely delivery of the project is there. So he's a central the top player of that one. And then uh, the last one is end user, me and you, who are going to use this, uh, the system for together. So a uh, basic, are uh, the uh, generally, the teams are much, you can expand it as much as possible. Different things are add up here. But uh, in the expert system, more or less, uh, this are, there are five key players all together depending upon the size of the system we are working all together and then yes of course we have talked about this thing so the rules are being produced production system models and then the system they are checked with the facts so uh, complete structure of this rule based system comes out to be on this one that we have the facts the database just let's say we talk about uh, in terms of the uh, medical perspective out here. So in the database, the patient has done the pathology. So he has done the CBC complete. Uh, so we have got the information about RBC, WBC, platelet count, hemoglobins. Altogether, we have done the thyroid test. We have done uh, our renal function test. We have done the glucose test. We have done the uh, the average glucose test. So all these facts are available in the database, right? Those tests what we have done. Now in the knowledge based system which we say if then here the expert rules are here so now the rules triggering the if the blood pressure blood pressure have you measured is it in the database yes it was there in the database database right okay so how much was the blood pressure blood pressure was 95 okay if blood pressure was more than 80 and such and such parameter then definitely the patient is hypertensive uh, and he has to fulfill this condition and so it will be categorized separately right and then it's, it's reverse it is having a lower blood, lower bp case the sugar measurement the hemoglobin measurement so all kind of rules are being done here they will match up with the fact which is there in the database and with the inference engine where we will they combine the rules and the fact with the explanation facility it can have an external database also to support some argument to take the help from the other database the user interface where the user will use it and give this facility 
second interface which is being provided is called as a developer interface a developer interface those who nowadays everybody is using this smartphone you can understand uh, there is a developer mode in your mobile some of you who have rooted your mobile they understand that this is not for everybody those who are expert and those who know how to play with that one they want a new operating system some different uh, frame uh, uh, framework to be installed so they know so you have to activate the developer interface and after activating you can uh, overcome you can uh, superimpose a new operating system on your mobile a different one a frame one and you can do a different task altogether so these kind of features they have introduced above first it is a characteristics for this expert system that once and what is the use of that because of this developer interface this expert system they the can enhance, enhance themselves right they can enhance themselves yeah. they can they have software update they can update it here so new things will come the knowledge engine and expert will update the rules they will amend the rules they will increase the rules and then we will be having the system performance will be done in a better way so these are the characteristics up here now they can make mistake yes like a human being who can make a mistake we should be accepting this fact that machine can also make mistake even uh, no matter how much uh, artificial intelligence perfection we achieve definitely there is a chance and that is that they can the mistakes can be made up here and we have to make it as much small as possible these are the rules forward chaining and backward chaining rules up here so this is a little bit how you proceed with the rules for that one because time is uh, not permitting up here so let's come up to the uh, a study what we have done about here so it will make up here this the expert system is nothing of a completely theoretical concept also so basically just to i reconcile the, the what is the expert system basically you are confirming the knowledge in form of rules from the expert this rules is coded in the machine with an option of updating the rules upgrading the rules adding a new database new facts with the figure and then it is being applied to a different way and in this scenario we are discussing about the medical application so this is an expert system which is being used in the indian rural public healthcare system coming with the medicus 1.0 version out here so basically as we have uh, considered uh, this healthcare system in any kind of developing country uh, the misdiagnosis is there poor diagnosis and the in the especially in the rural area uh, we are talking about in the rural perspective the the doctors they are uh, definitely they have their own uh, priorities they don't want to live in the rural areas and the salaries might be an issue some other things out here so experts in the rural area they are not uh, that much easily available the connectivity of the roads are sometimes it is a big problem due to the some severe weather is there flooding is there any other part power outage is there some other part so if poor infrastructure is here then the in the rural parts the doctor the equipments are not also that high cost so what happened that health record cannot be maintained up here so the healthcare system so there's let's say the x-ray machine is there but the expert have there is no uh, uh, qualified radiologist to attend that thing out here so we want that rule based system is there system is existing out here and uh, with the advancement in the diagnostic tools we will see that uh, now we are getting a miniaturization of all the um, testing you see the blood sugar test can be done easily at home also this is also highly accurate as compared and same with the standard with the, what we do in the hospital altogether with the blood pressure maintain the pulse oximeter so some parameters they are the tools diagnostic tools are getting small and small people are getting used in their daily basis out here right so using that one we are able to use this uh, and improve the public health care system for the rural area where the machine has been trained with the diagnostic information of the patient record is maintained centrally and any kind of a problem let's say ecg was done patient was done in the ecg in the in the hospital in the rural one and automatically the diagnostic uh, on basis of the history and on the basis of the previous training the system recommend that this is a high risk patient so immediately the doctor 
can advise him to consult the special facility and a lower risk patient he can treat with the medicine part altogether so in this case we at the x we have saved the time of the patient also and the and the number of the doctor which was a shortage of here we have overcome that one so the collection of the data the processing the result have all together have modified to a workflow and we have saved the life that complete information is being recorded which can be used for other patient as well benefits are huge we have witnessing that one the india is a big country out here the populations of different uh, area different languages of we have 27 28 regional languages also so communicating with the doctors medical expert telemedicine facility they are all being handled up here by this medicus expert system then the heart failure telemonitoring case was also discussed and okay yeah this is uh, recently also the expert system for covid which we are uh, witnessing up here you will see out here to nowadays it is a serious issue because of this whole of this year from last march in fact in this march if we, the shutdown was there in different part of the world and we are still witnessing the shutdown in most of the europe and america and this asia and india as well so patient uh, we are waiting for this vaccination to come up but before that one the prevention is there now what is happening every medical facility of every country they are on the brink of the uh, they are uh, they are overloaded the doctors are oh, overloaded yeah. the patients so so what happened so what we want to identify so we want to identify the high risk patient which we can attend right we want to attend the high risk patient uh, first and foremost so what happened now either we uh, put up the human uh, again the manpower to ask everybody the symptoms and they tell up they come up with the one and then we uh, decide on the basis of that one again the person uh, will make a decision so what happened we created a simple rule based system then clinical parameters are added the person can himself do that one the short answers will be asked all together and then basis of on this one a recommendation will be followed up so that whether the patient is high risk he should be attended or uh, it is a low risk patient for that one so this is quite uh, easy effectively used also we are being using up here and this expert system as we have said they are uh, not a new thing their dendral mycin was from the stanford university they have already used up here prospector uh, this uh, peer That's expert right. system to uh, to lungs cancer so they are using it all together for a long time and uh, this rule based system for disease diagnostic again a rule based system diagnostic center for the ruler base they have come up with this malaria tb breast cancer cholera fever so the patient id is created electronic health record is kept up and then the different diagnostic uh, information is being stored and then on the basis of the questions and answers the rule base the, the patient the, doc, the system is able to recommend the doctor about the state of the patient for the future course of medication and so this was uh, things are happening this was this is done by the university of lori in lagos and many things are happening up here so uh, recently here in uh, amu and the university of the muslim universities we are at the moment uh, uh, dealing uh, uh, with biomedical center what we are i am representing up here so this human factor the faculties are here we are having this interdisciplinary biomedical and human factor engineering where we are um, yeah. uh, dealing with the uh, signal analysis for the ecg eeg other uh, physiological signals and other so this is an options for those who are uh, interested up here to take up this area this emerging area for artificial intelligence uh, in uh, medical applications for masters postgraduate programs for the phd programs also for biomedical signals altogether then and we have a special interdisciplinary brain research center also existing up here which is uh, uh, basically a neuroscience and which is a thrust area as we have said the brain computer interface which is uh, now it is a thrust area in most of the research centers so again we have a, a faculty up here we have taking the task how to improve uh, this uh, 
information collection and to coordinate so that we can cover up the task from the brain itself just by the thoughts and the machines are able to perform the particular task so still that research is also being conducted up here then we again for uh, uh, in autonomous vehicles also and electrified transportation we have a center uh, with the name of uh, electric carrot so center for advanced research in electrified transportation and it is uh, now the world renowned center a lot of uh, things uh, they are coming up with the new ideas and uh, the, it's a good team which is working on uh, different projects they recently they have they are winner of edison challenge 2016 with a good incubation center so uh, there are a, a good amount of opportunities uh, for mm, to, to work uh, at the Elite Muslim universities in terms of the artificial intelligence as uh, application, whether it is in electrified or autonomous transportation or in the uh, medical field up here. So it would be a good opportunity for us also to have a mutual contact uh, from the students, from the faculty members of your institute to be in touch. Uh, regularly to share the ideas as we have said earlier also because the knowledge the more you share the idea the more you interact definitely things improves and we get a lot of information and th we get a lot of innovations because of that one so that is also a good thing we can uh, talk upon here and these are some references which we have come up i was given a time for one and a half hours so i have come to my conclusion so uh, i have any you have some uh, things uh, some uh, questions to ask upon yes we can do that one now okay uh, dr mohammed safras thank you for your uh, great and nice presentation uh, thank you i hope the participants we all gathered the good information from this session and uh, all the participants, you please fill the feedback with the correct email as well as the proper information. And Dr. Sarfraj, uh, we like to have uh, we like to have to say the thanks for this great uh, session from you. Thank in future, you. yeah, if in future, surely we will communicate with you regarding uh, are coming uh, any uh, new things. Uh, you please uh, cooperate with us. Thank you for your uh, great time to spend. This yes, uh, yes, of course, Dr. Rajesh. And it was a good interaction also. And as we have discussed lastly, uh, that uh, it will be good uh, if we have some kind of interaction and coordination uh, between the um, uh, research community. So definitely the student from both sides gain from that one. And uh, these kind of events help also to a good extent, the exchange of ideas. So definitely it will be good if you come up with some kind of mechanism where we can interact in um, um, six months or in, once in a year. So we can come up with the new things can be discussed. Some student you can have. We can have collaborative um, uh, uh, understanding. The people can take up research here also. So that option is also open. So we would like to uh, have a good uh, academic partnership with our institute. Yeah, thank thing. you so much for your nice presentation and cooperation, sir. Sir, please, can you see the chat box? There are some questions for you. You, you if your time permits, you please uh, make a look for these questions. Okay, okay. In chat box. Okay, right. I am there. So, all right. Zevdi, happy. So now it is becoming the, the, and. Uh, Yeah, okay. This uh, Zevdi Habti have written a lot of good questions about here. Definitely, as uh, the prevailing condition is here, this uh, COVID-19 cases and the one form of the diagnosis, because basically what is happening, this is uh, affecting uh, the patient, uh, the breathing issue, respiration rate are severely affected upon here. And that is the cause of the death also in men patients, especially in the old age patient. Now, if we want the, the AI to help us here, they, so as we have said, the first thing will be diagnostic tool. AI can't do anything without that one. So first diagnostic, either you go for a CT scan or X-ray. Of course, CT scan can give you a very high resolution images as compared to the X-ray. But of course, if you have that, that one thing. Now, once you have got the images up here, if you see up here in COVID patient, what we having here, the normal X-ray patient and the COVID patient, there are some features which are available and which are, you can say, the parameter check. 
like we have the white spots are there on the which will affect that this much of the parts of the lungs are not working all together okay so now we uh, so people have started working on thing and they have come up with the algorithm also i have come across in fact in iit delhi india also they have designed a uh, program it a platform is independent you can have a matlab one you can have a python one or any other thing c so that's not an issue but what happening this medical diagnostic so what we happen the ex, as you see the one is the expert one is the expert who is having a chest expert who is looking at the ct scan with his experience he is coming up to the conclusion yes this patient is having this uh, symptoms are uh, worsening and he is a high risk patient okay so now what happened we are training this kind of, we are giving this kind of images and like uh, hundreds of images 200 or 300 4000 images to the computer and this learning is called as supervised learning supervised learning right so this and the system is being learned for that one and now once the new things which come up with the image which the person has not the computer has not uh, witness before the basis on that learning he, it is able to identify that patient is having high risk patient or the covid patient condition is serious or he is a positive patient now again we have said that confirmation can't be done in this case so what happened the system can only recommend system can only recommend with the degree of accuracy that it is 80 percent accurate confirmed on 85 percent 90 percent but then again it is advising or recommending a doctor to take the final decision so and in terms of deep learning yes deep learning is being used up here and but the diff, uh, issue which is here which is deep learning it is highly accurate and a lot of the image uh, identification image processing but it requires a huge amount of data first thing right the amount of data is required is very huge and then the processing time is also depending upon the computational time of the machine the processing time is affected okay so we have to check and balance so uh, before that also without deep learning also the things can happen with the neural networks all together and genetics here and with the deep learning also but in doing with deep learning you have to make sure that you have a good amount of data good amount of data means in this case what the question you have asked it should having a lot of ct scan images to be trained the network for if you are having that thing available then definitely a deep learning would be a good option but if you don't have that thing and still you want ai is the answer for that one in that cases we have to go for some other mechanism we feed forward uh, back propagation that can be a neural network or we can have other clustering or machine learning algorithm and uh, can we put trust on diagnostic system by ai which also programming language Ha, yes, uh, this is an important thing. How far we can go in uh, putting up our belief that AI is a thing out here. You see, once we talk about this uh, AI altogether, we should remember uh, that uh, there is a good amount of involvement. That there are basically, if you say I three, uh, three big factors altogether. First is volume of the data, as we have said. Good amount of volume good training is there second v is the velocity of the data the speed at which data is coming and data is generated it's a speed i means it should be able to get a new data every time right a new data a fresh data which he had not witnessed so the training will be accordingly altogether then the third uh, uh, issue would be the variety of the data as we have seen the diversity of the the ct scan for particular ethnic group will be different CT scan for that one. So these kind of diversity of the data should allow more features and that can in turn increase the generalizability and the potential, potentially the accuracy of the model. So definitely if we have to put it into the consideration and this is a important thing out here that the once we come, come up with the medicines and all together, it have a defect from the different ethnic group also, different peoples under here. Example is there the artificial imagining tool which you have just we have discussed about here the chest x-ray sign for TB tuberculosis which have achieving a level of uh, accuracy with the human being 
now this will be able to be on the different ethnic group different country different people it must be trained properly right otherwise what happened if i make my system of the particular class it will be able to perform for that class only and sometime when we require it to be tested to a general public or other people it might not perform that accordingly so that is a very important thing in the ai system once we train it like diversity should be maintained it should be as diverse as possible here if you are able to maintain the diversity you are able to train it in a good amount of data then definitely it will be a good option for us so i think that was done okay data set they have asked about basically uh, data set uh, in the ecg the uh, numerous data set are here some are benchmark data set mit bih massachusetts institute of technology and boston is a hospital in us that have a very comprehensive data set and exclusive as, as you can say the benchmark for ecg and other eg so you can uh, uh, turn up to that one i what i can do i can share the link for that one for you so so you can have that uh, from there you can take up the uh, that is an issue once we come up with this physionet so here so this is a website you can have a lot of uh, benchmark data set for ecg and eeg to be okay i think i had been address up here so can we finish up together Yes, sir. So yes, I can sir. thank the participant. Thank you very much. Good interaction. Thank you for organizers. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, now the time for the vote of thanks. Um, I like to say thank for our uh, management and the school dean and associate deans and research associate deans and um, our program chair and the Tatale. And my uh, this program convener, Dr. Misfin, and uh, program chair, Dr. Biruk, and my co-convener, sorry, my co-coordinator, and uh, organizing secretary, Dr. Sankita, and other coordinators, Dr. Wazi, Dr. Tipuswami, Dr. Gobi Krishna. Um, so we successfully completed uh, two series. Actually, the already I told you the objective of this series is. Uh, to share the knowledge of our faculty members from outside world to interact and collaboration, the sharing the knowledge between us. So we started the series uh, in the uh, in the month of uh, September, and the series one. With the September series, which includes uh, the blockchain technology and uh, social media analytics and the machine learning and data predictive analysis techniques, again the first series one. And the next series we started this uh, um, this uh, what <clears throat> November and December. In this series, which includes the cloud computing with uh, AWS and uh, artificial intelligence in the healthcare, which one is we finished now, and the close cloud-based uh, e-learning and emotional processing and the speech for uh, using the speech and the optimized machine learning and the software testing. See these all these. Uh, uh, the, the research and the new topics we discussed in this series. Um, <clears throat> this organizing a team, actually we plan to uh, do some more uh, um, advanced in uh, upcoming uh, series based on the feedback which is given by you as a participants. We uh, we seriously taking care of your comments and uh, feedbacks which is given by you. So because uh, our Ethiopian uh, community faculties, we are uh, Sincerely, we are participating for this uh, series. So I like to say thanks for uh, all the participants for your good cooperations and uh, um, <clears throat> good support for this webinar series. And uh, <clears throat> we will see by the next year. Sorry, uh, after uh, one month or after three, four months, we will see the next series, series three. So uh, thank you for all participants. Thank you for the uh, my organizing team. Thank you for the coordinators. And thank you for my higher officials. Thank you for all. Thank you so much. See you.
Dr. Musmin, are you here, Dr. Musmin? Yeah, you can talk something, uh, Dr. Musmin. Okay, okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. See you in by the next series.